I got it. Okay, I see it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good, good morning, luck. Folks. Thanks. Okay. Wow, welcome. Hello, Hala, Yvonne, Ms. Bridges, um, Dr. Rhodes. <laughs> this is the fullest we've been. <laughs> so nice to, to see you all here. And let me just check here. Um, all right. Can everyone, okay, I'm gonna just wait until everyone has a chance to turn on their cameras just so that I know you're here, if you can. If you can. I will say I have, I have no electricity. I'm here in Eastern Africa and we, so I, my camera's on, but you can't see me, I'm waving. No worries. Okay, I see you okay. waving. <laughs> and it's really late at night, okay, thanks. All right, welcome. Hi, Yvonne, hi, Dr. Rhodes. And um, Ms. Bridges, I don't know if you're going to come in by camera today, but I see your box is here, so I know you're here. I'm trying. It's just, <laughs> it's still acting up again, so I'm trying to, I can see me, but I'm trying to get it up to the corner, so. Okay, perfect. No worries. I'm trying. All. I'm getting yep. there. <laughs> Um, and I'm just going to check um, with Dr. Shabazz to see if he is able to come. Uh, I just don't know what to do here. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order while people are just getting their stuff, um, getting technology figured out and also waiting to see if Dr. <laughs> Shabazz can figure, can join us. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order. I'm calling the Monday, July 31st meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly to order at 2.03 p.m. With the extension of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Uh, and let's see here. I am going to do a sound check just quickly. This meeting is being recorded. Um, so let's start with you, Yvonne. Can you hear us? Can we yes. hear you? Yes, I can okay. hear you. Thank you. Great. I can hear you too. Okay, Dr. Rhodes. I can hear you and I assume you can hear me. Yes, very well. Okay, and Hala. Um, yes, I can hear you. Okay, excellent. And Ms. Bridges. Well, we did hear Miss Bridges, and I think she could hear us just a moment ago. I can uh, hear you. I just can't get my picture back up there, but I can hear everybody. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to start by calling our first period of public comment. Like always, we have two periods of public comment. Um, so I will call the first period of public comment. I'll read the statement. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your name, pronouns, and address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes. Um, and we will not engage in a dialogue, but we will uh, certainly be listening closely. And I see that Dr. Shabazz is trying to join. So I'm just gonna take a moment because Jennifer's not here. Um, just see where he might be coming in. Let's see. Okay, well, we'll give we'll give that a, a moment. So I have called a period of public comment. Um, if you are in the attendees and you would like to make public comment, please go ahead and use the raised hand function uh, or hit pound nine and uh, you will be brought in um, if you're on the phone using that using that function. Okay, Mara, I see you. Just give me one second. I'm gonna move you over. Um, let's see. 
Okay, you should be rejoining here. Oh, here we go. Okay, well, I, was, <laughs> I was just wondering if it would be possible to somehow see the pack, the draft of the um, proposal that you're working on. It's just kind of hard to follow at the meeting when you're talking about a document and, you know, paragraph so and so, and I can't see it and it's not in the packet. So I know it's very preliminary, but it's still hard to follow. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Mara. We're actually waiting um, to get a revised version of the draft um, on Wednesday. So I will ask Jennifer to include that in the packet and I'll also send it over to you. Um, today, we're not really going to be going through the report as much as we are having some um, further discussion about what needs to be included in the report. Does that, is that helpful? Yeah, that's good. I'll okay. look forward to seeing it. Thanks. All right, awesome. Okay, thank you, Mara. Um, and I think, let's see here. Uh, let me move. Okay, here we go. And then, <laughs> okay, Dr. Shabazz is going through an update of his Zoom um, that started automatically. So um, we'll catch him in a minute when he joins. I can still hear you, but I just can't get um, the video back on, even though it says it's on. I don't see anything. Yeah, we we can't definitely can't see you. Um, but I here don't we know are. why the camera is not working. I did you get it working last time somehow? What was the trick last time? I'm trying to remember. In and out, in and out. <laughs> Went out <laughs> when I came back in. That's the only thing that would do it. Um, and and then I got on my phone instead of the laptop. I mean the. That's right. Now I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, feel free if you want to get another box going here and get on also with your phone. Okay. Um, right. And then, all right, here we go. I'm going to move Dr. Shabazz over and we should be ready to go. I'll just make sure he can hear us. Hi, Dr. Shabazz. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Welcome. We uh, nice to see you. We just had our first period of public comment, um, and we are now going to move into some discussion here. I first wanted to announce um, to the committee, in case um, you may have heard, uh, but Finance Director Sean Mangano um, has resigned and is uh, it will no longer be with the town. I think uh, at it, I actually have to look at what the date is, but it's 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 somewhere um, in in August. So he is, I think, moving um, into back into school leadership, um, not in the Amherst community, but uh, elsewhere. So he, Sean was a real partner in terms of uh, discussions that we have had over the years. He was um, the creative behind thinking about the uh, reserve fund and, and using um, the cannabis tax, well, the cannabis tax revenue, helping us to, to find a way to, to model our, our annual contributions from that. So um, I say that because as we're coming forward with our recommendations, um, we were in touch with Sean about how to, in particular, accelerate the fund. And um, Dr. Rhodes and I had a really uh, a good meeting with him. And so there's going to be a transition period in, in the finance department. Dr. Rhodes, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about that and how that might impact us at all. Well, I was I was really shocked when I heard that he was uh, leaving because I've known Sean since he was at the schools and he's he was assistant finance director. Anyway, I, all the way when he was just a budget analyst. So anyway, I was shocked at that. And um, 
I did set up a meeting with him, a farewell meeting, because I was just reeling from it. Yeah. And I needed to have a one-on-one -on, -one on him before he departed. So I will be doing that. Excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, I know you had a really tight relationship with him and I was certainly crushed to hear um, that he was leaving as well. I think um, it would, it, it will definitely, uh, you know, there will be a transition period. And so um, we'll, we'll, we'll work through all of that with Paul and, and, and the others. There's an excellent finance department. We don't get to see a lot of the other folks there, but um, I know that they'll be stepping up and that um, Paul will be also um, putting that position up. So last week, uh, we got into a discussion that I think was really useful, um, and in particular, um, starting to develop more concrete ideas about how the fund um, should be used, how we want to recommend that the fund be used. And I wanted to continue with that discussion uh, today. Before we do, oh, I see you, Ms. Bridges. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> can you still see us now that we see you? I can see you. Good. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> okay. I there don't know is. what's wrong with the other one, but I don't want to turn it off because if I turn the tablet off, I'm afraid I'll turn you off. That's okay. Yeah, leave that one on. You might, you have one muted. That's good. That's perfect. Okay. okay. So um, I wanted to pull up from our uh, survey, something that I think would be good for us to look at. I'm sure we've all had an opportunity to, to look at this um, and it may have been a little while now since uh, you've had a chance to look in it, but I'm going to share my screen here. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So this is the question when we asked, um, please consider each type of repair for Black um, Amherst residents of African heritage and indicate uh, whether you support it. So I thought we might just quickly visit this chart um, and then open it up for discussion. So the first question is about whether the, the survey respondent supports financial assistance for buying or remodeling a house as a means of repair, 85.2% um, said yes. Um, do you support financial assistance for renting a home? You can see, I'm not gonna read them all out. I'm just gonna go through them here slowly. look at the percentages broken down um, by Black, Black and descended of enslaved individuals and not Black. So we have um, financial assistance for improving a business or starting a business, educational scholarships, symbolic acts, And then um, we have cash payments. I think this is the one where we see the biggest differential between um, folks who identify as Black and folks who do not. Um, so last week, uh, we, we started having this discussion. Um, we talked about the possibility of making um, some bold statements around certain initiatives and possibly um, uh, Dr. Shabazz laid out, I thought, an excellent start to a just a general philosophy in terms of um, how we see the fund uh, should be used based on not our not necessarily our own um, just our own thoughts, of course, but the the full consultative process that we went through, including this survey and all of the various listening sessions. So I'm going to open up the floor for further discussion on this and um, and then we'll go from there.
And again, this is, um, you know, we have our report right now has recommendations about a successor body, about accelerating the fund. Um, we have a recommendation about compensation, about naming. Um, and we also have some specific recommendations that we're working on. But what do we want to tell the folks um, at, in town council and in the town in terms of overall how we feel um, the funds should be used? And I will just offer this while I'm waiting for hands. Um, I just from a counselor perspective, I've been giving this a lot of thought and it occurs to me that we'll likely be more successful in having our fund accelerated to the full 2 million um, if we are also recommending initiatives that the council or the town has already committed to, such as youth empowerment. So really thinking about building on the CSWG recommendations. And when we look at <clears throat> um, the, the chart that I had just uh, had, had up, how can we sort of fit that into um, the commitments that the town has already made, like youth empowerment, affordable housing, um, and do we, you know, how how sort of clean and clear do we want this report and direct do we want this report to be? So again, I think that if we are asking for the fund to be accelerated, counselors will likely um, be more apt to support accelerating the fund if there's already funds underway um, for a particular project. But of course, we we need to focus on putting, you know, forward what we feel, um, you know, we've heard through the voices of the Black community in Amherst. Quiet bunch today. <laughs> Anyone want Dr. Rhodes? Yes, I, I mean, I, 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 I guess you know, my my feeling, my thought, and, and everything that I know going forward here financially in the town. Uh, and I'm just going to reiterate what I said uh, the other day. I think that uh, um, we have a greater opportunity of leveraging the funds that we have by. Uh, by partnering with other committees, groups, et cetera, such as CPA uh, and, and the recreation department and using our funds as leverage uh, to, uh, when I say leverage, I mean, for instance, if we said, hey, we would like uh, our funds to be matched, the funds that we put in be matched at a minimum by uh, the Recreation Department for supportive programs that would support, uh, uh, would, that would prioritize African-American youth. I mean, that, so, so what we're saying is we're gonna put our funds in and we want you to match them either on a one-to-one -one basis or two-to-one basis or whatever uh, for programmatic purposes for African-American youth. Uh, similarly for the, uh, for the uh, youth empowerment center. If you're talking about a youth empowerment center, uh, then it would seem to me to be that you're, one of the big things about a youth empowerment center is going to be programming. How do you, what kind of programs do you offer? So therefore that's going to be, again, money. So if the, if the town is going to be putting in money for that, uh, we can say that we will uh, support that effort by having our funds match. It's it's getting, it's matching going going down the road. So that's one 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 concept. The other thing is, as I said last week, uh, yes, I would definitely think it's no harm in us asking the town to accelerate our funds. All right, have, have no problem with that because if you don't ask, you don't you don't get it. The worst they can say is no. 
All right, and and I I don't believe that we should count on it. Uh, as I said said before, uh, the town is uh, for fiscal 25, 26, and 27 are going to be facing some very hard times. Uh, and I don't think that there was there's going to be an availability of any excess funds coming our way to be able to accelerate uh, this funding process for us. And so I think if, if we don't have some other kind of way of dealing with funding, then we have what we have, which is waiting till 10 years till we start spending dollar one. And I do not want I would not support not spending dollar one until 10 years from now. So let me just ask you this, um, Dr. Rhodes, just um, to build on that a bit. If, if we think about uh, right now, the town, let's say approximately has $5 million in reserves. Okay. And there have been various ways in which um, different members uh, of, of of the town have discussed that money being used. So we have infrastructure projects, we have roads and sidewalks, we have all sorts of things, right? As you're saying, we have about 500,000 in our account. Okay, let's say, I think it's maybe, maybe 450 or a little over, close to 500. So we've got 1.5 million. Could you see a scenario where the town says, well, we've committed to the 2 million and there's 500 in there. So there's 1.5 million to go. And we have 5 million in our reserves. And so by accelerating this, uh, if we move 1.5 million from one reserve account into another reserve account that, ha that has the name reparations on it, and it's going to the principal is going to be held, so only interest uh, investment interest is going to be used off of it. So the money is really going to stay pretty stable. So we're just moving it from here to there. We're keeping the principal intact, and the recommendations that the AHRA have made are recommendations that are in alignment with other things that we want to pursue as a, as a town and as a community or that we've committed to pursuing, um, particularly recommendations that have come through the CSWG. Do you see a world, a paradigm where that kind of thinking might be supported? Well, I, I tell you one thing, it's, it's very, very, very creative. Uh, here, here's what I, I just wanna make sure I understand. We have, Let's say five hundred thousand dollars. The town has five million in reserve. You're asking the town to move one point five million of those reserves to the AHRA fund. Yep. The AHRA will expend a percentage of that uh, as um, as interest. You know what we could would would consider to be interest earned on that. You can we can assume you know, say 3% interest earned on, on $2 million. We can, we, if we assume that, right? Uh, then we will use that 3% exactly. for our purposes starting now. Exactly. Now, uh, yeah, so, uh, and yeah, and, and yeah, we, was, we use that, that, that 3% off of, off of that, Money. And now the only drawback to that from the town's perspective is that now that two million, uh, that 1.5 million, which was in their reserve, it takes them down to 3.5 million dollars, and 1.5 million is in ours. They no longer have the uh, uh, access to those funds because they're now a they're a HRA. Um, wow. Now, I mean, and, and hell. It, again, it's creative. Uh, it, it, I, I, I want to think about it because there, there's some possibility there in terms of we looked at it in a different manner. Yes. Uh, That's and, sort and, of what I've been trying to do is like the framing of it is really, if we look at it, we're really just like they just put this 
fund together for capital expenses, you know, and it's moving money from one fund to another fund for select purposes. All right, all right, all right. So, so right here, if we do that, which I think is a pretty good deal, we asked them to do that. We can say then on the other hand, you no longer have to set aside the money that you were going to be setting aside for us, but you, and you can set it, put it back into that reserve account. Exactly. Exactly. Now, now that has that the that uh, that accomplishes two purposes. I mean, one of them is brilliant. I mean, I think that if we go that route and they accepted that, all right, that would stop what I had considered to be my number one fear. Right. was that the town would at some point in the future renege or find some way of not funding this. Uh, or say, hey, we no longer have money available because the cash reserves aren't there. Or we're taking the cash reserves because we have so many other areas that we need to fund. We're going to use those cash reserves there. That would preempt that from happening if they would agree to that. Because it's, it's, you're, we're saying simply put it here now, that which you are going to be giving us in the future, you now put back in there. Yep. And then in those reserves. That then freezes us in the present, a lot frees up us in the present to begin use, utilizing those funds, interest off of those funds. Exactly. And at the same time, it guarantees that those funds are going to be there. Uh, and the town won't then renege on it because we have them in there. Okay. As in sales, they say, if you don't ask, you don't get. So <laughs> we need to ask. Yeah. And, and the principle is safe. You know, they're not, it, this, the principle goes nowhere. And I think that that's really, if we, with this endowment model, um, there's a security in knowing that because I think the town has entered into a deeper commitment to um, matters related to community safety and reparative justice and equity. And so to say, you know what, we the, the principle, we're simply moving it here. We're earning investment income on it. So if it's 3%, we have 60,000 a year. If it's 5%, which I think is actually maybe even more like it, it's $100,000 a year toward initiatives to be started right away. And then to build on that, we could even say, and I talked with Dr. Shabazz a little bit about this. Um, we could say, for example, okay, we have it accelerated. We're Let's say we're assuming 5%, that's $100,000 a year. So we want the first X amount of years to go toward constructing this youth empowerment center. I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying that's what it should be. I'm just saying we can actually recommend that X amount of years be used toward a particular initiative. Yeah. Um, I yeah, one, one thing, because uh, I don't know who's going to be selling this, but the uh, <laughs> probably me. <laughs> the, well, well the, the selling point is that um, your the major selling point is that the money that is being put into the um, uh, the AHRA, uh, the one point five, that they have control of now the money in terms of reserves, the reserves they have control of, and they they're no, no longer have to set aside any amount of reserves for, for AHRA. They go, those reserves that are going to be there, any excess cash. Certified uh, free cash, well, yeah. When they, when they have certified free cash anymore, instead of a certain percentage of that going to AHRA, it now goes. Wherever. It goes wherever and stays uh, with the town. Uh, the town no longer has to think about that. That has legs to it. It has really, really good legs to it. And, okay. um, and, and I can see, uh, I see no, no, no objections to that because it's, uh, it, they're, they're not losing anything. They're, they're not going to be spent. They never would uh, be spending 1.5 million from reserves anyway. You know, uh, so you yeah. want to keep a reserve, yeah. Right. Exactly. So, you know, you know, you know, so it's coming. It's it's a it's it's a safe thing. They may put other kind of constraints on it, but it's it's a safe bet for them. 
And I think it would be Someone else have, have thinking or you know, like, have, uh, sorry. Well, right, right past, I think we need to sit down and talk to Paul and Sean before he leaves. I, I can't remember when I'm meeting with Sean. I certainly could uh, do that. But but this thing has some possibilities. I think I meet with Sean next week. So if I don't know if you'd be open to this, Dr. Rhodes, but if maybe for some small portion of the meeting that you, because I know you probably have a lot to catch up with him on, but if I could join you for a portion of the meeting, right. um, uh, otherwise, and, and I can make myself, I'm sure, available during the time that you have. Otherwise, we could try something else, um, because I think, do you know when Sean is, I can look it up. I think, I think it's the, uh, it's either the second or third week of August. Let me look. I have it right here. Um, let's see. Um, August 30th. All right, good enough. End of so just about a month, yeah. Right. So, so see, it, see if that one's possible. For all right, me. so I'm, I'm meeting with him on August 8th. Okay, what time? At one o'clock. And I will, um, I just, I need to have about at least 20 minutes with him. Sure, absolutely. And, absolutely. Uh, so I'll, let me talk with him and then uh, we'll set up to, and have him know that you're going to be there at some point. Perfect. Right? That's great. Thank all you. Right. Good enough. Bye. All right, it's great. Does anyone else want to um, comment on on that that piece of things right now? Does that sound like a good um, approach here to at least start to explore with Sean and Paul? Okay. Yeah. Soon after we meet with Sean, we need to uh, get on uh, Paul's uh, calendar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it's fine. I think I agree a lot with what um, Dr. Rhodes said about making sure that we have, we can begin to this uh, offer resources sooner than later, like yeah. waiting 10 years is not, uh, not um, accept acceptable. Yes. So I do agree. Awesome. Okay. Um, Dr. Shabazz. So um, I'll address the funding issue, but then I want to step back to look at things from a bigger picture. Um, the essential points are the same points that we made relative to the whole free cash process, modeling it on cannabis tax revenues and so forth. That is that the money is still always the town's money. Putting it in a different bucket and putting a post-it note on it saying for reparative justice or work or for whatever is doesn't alter the fact that the ultimate approval for the disbursement of the money and the ultimate control in the event of any crisis or any serious exigency, the control still rests with the elected leaders of the town of Amherst, the elected a legislative body of the town of Amherst. They lose no control over it. It is a good um, faith uh, 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 step. It is a, uh, um, it is a matter of giving one's word that it will be used in a certain way, barring an unforeseen crisis. But um, that was our argument from the beginning. Um, some of the counselors you know, we're a little bit on the fence. And, and I think finally in, that, in the meeting we had with them, I think they saw the ultimate logic of the matter, which is that it ultimately is the town's money and the town uh, legislative body that sets budgets and approve expenditures will ultimately still retain power over every bit of this $2 million endowed fund. It is simply a, making a promise, a promise of where it will be directed following certain protocols and certain uh, um, steps that it will be directed in this way in the future. All we're really asking, as uh, Michelle has used the word accelerating, is to sort of jettison the original model of developing this endowed fund 
based on free cash, based on, um, you know, taking 10, you know, giving ourselves 10 years to create it, to basically jettisoning that kind of timetable in favor of going ahead and declaring it now out of this particular bucket of reserve money that's already in reserve, already invested, already drawing interest. We're just saying, take it from, from that general bucket and put it in a specific bucket labeled for reparative justice work. Okay, so yes, I'd like to try to have this conversation once again with the counselors. And I have sent a motion to, uh, uh, to Michelle uh, for us to consider actually, if we are in full agreement with this to go ahead and, and approve this as part of our planning process, that we, we go ahead and stipulate this, that we're asking for this um, accelerated approach from what we originally discussed as a funding stream to going ahead and designating the creation of the $2 million fund and that um, the, uh, the payout of uh, dividends of this fund, not touching the, the principal, but that dividends can now be directed by the very reparative justice plan that we are here, hereby um, determining, we are hereby putting forward. If we can uh, look at that motion, think about it, ratify it, then I think that I'm prepared to endorse that. The second part of it um, before stepping, well, and, and as part of this stepping out to the bigger picture has to do with the question of other actions that our town government has taken is taking, has agreed to take that have um, clear benefits and, uh, and, 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 and may indeed have a very significant relationship to the, the, the general project that this work is about for us, which is about how do we reduce, how do we end structural racism, specifically anti-Black racism, as it is a systemic part of our town's reality in terms of um, these are of both historic and continuing inequities that hold back free people, Black people, the descendants of enslaved people from being able to materially move forward and close the wealth gap and be uh, um, made whole for the wrongful taking that has occurred to our ancestors and, and down to us right now in the present, that to the, the, the work of that, there are other initiatives. I think the D, and with this has come up before, and at one point, um, I know some counselors were saying, well, reparative justice is already the CREST program, or reparative reparations is already uh, in the creation of a DEI office. And, and it was as if to say, our work is done. We should just ratify what's already been approved by the council and, and we're, we're done. And we said, no, no, no. That some of those are, uh, um, yes, aimed at generally addressing uh, historic inequities and, 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 and addressing systemic violence and problems that, um, but, they are not specifically about how we are addressing the historic harm of, that has occurred in this town of slavery and of anti-Black racism all the way down to the present. And for that, we said there needed to be more specific targeted uh, 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 remedies, efforts to repair. Now, that still doesn't negate that those actions that were recommended by the community safety working group and those actions that uh, the community safety and social justice committee 
continue to work on and advocate have no relationship to reparative justice to, and to uh, black reparations. I think they do, okay? And I think that we can very well recommend that um, funds in whole or in part in whole for a period of time or in part uh, over time can be designated from the payout of the endowment uh, with the understanding that it is about us recognizing that those actions, those steps that need money, that require money are in whole or in part aimed at addressing structural inequities in addressing both historic and continuing uh, harms. And that is where I am prepared to uh, uh, look at or to support a type of motion to our work to suggest that we could recommend, uh, as I said, in whole or in part, some of the funds that the accelerated, uh, immediately created endowed fund would go towards supporting. Again, if only to recognize that within those efforts, there ought to be specifically targeted uh, efforts uh, uh, that address anti-Black racism. Uh, perhaps in the form of, of, of some of the kinds of, of workshops, trainings, activities. I don't want to get ahead of the kinds of needs assessment and the kinds of work that people who would begin to create, say, a youth empowerment center would begin to do through focus groups with Black youth and other youth. Okay. I don't want to get ahead of that work, but clearly some of the work would have such a, such, such uh, possibilities. For example, I know African-American youth have often asked for and uh, desired as part of um, their, it, it, while in the high school, the opportunity to access and find out about historically black colleges and universities and in, in the form of perhaps going on an HBCU tour. My own child at PVPA in South Hadley um, benefited from such a tour that was organized and, and funded by, by the school and, and supported by the teachers. But again, it required money. It took gas fare, it took you know hiring a vehicle and a driver and taking the, the students down there one weekend. Okay, and again, it's not to say that the door would be closed to any other student that would want to be a part of the HBCU tour, okay? But that we understand that it would prioritize, to use the word Dr. Rhodes previously used, it would be prioritizing students from our particular ethnic group, our particular community with our particular history. And so the funding for that, if that becomes part of the of, of such initiatives, a part of the youth empowerment work or the multicultural center or whatever other work, if there are specific kinds of things, then yes, I could see signing on that the reparative justice fund would be a source of support for those activities and those uh, uh, initiatives that the town is working on, has agreed to, and, and engaged in. So that's my, my piece about it. And I've, I've, I've sent uh, at least some draft language towards which to, to try and, uh, if we want to try to formalize something soon uh, in, in regards to that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. I have checked both of my email accounts and I don't see anything. Um, so I just want to maybe reset my email, refresh my emails. Did you send, which email account did you send the first motion to Dr. Shabazz? Oh, you're muted, Dr. Shabazz. For your email, it went to your uh, 3680 Gmail account. 
And for the Jennifer Moyston one, it went to moystonj and amherst.gov. Okay. Try sending, because I, I just refreshed. And yep. what I have from you, oh, I do have it. Okay. Um, it was so beautiful on this town of Amherst uh, letterhead here that I um, that I thought it was coming it was something from else. the Zoom or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have it. Okay. Hang on. Let me pull this up. Um, and also, I just want to address um, Ms. Bridges. Um, can you, I, I see your text, and I just want to confirm that you can hear me right now. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I can hear everybody. Every once in a while, the audio cuts off, but I, I can't see anybody, but I can hear everything. Okay, all right. Well, you know, one of the things that I know for the last meeting and probably again for this meeting is that we've transcribed the meetings. Um, so that can be really helpful for anyone, not just Ms. Bridges or Hala, who may have been getting cut in and out, but it, to have some times to have it in writing can be really helpful to read through. So when I Absolutely. get- Absolutely. Okay, so I'll send those um, to the committee then. Um, I'll send last week's and when we get this one, I'll send this week's. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Shabazz, I am going to share my screen here. Um, let's see. Share. Okay, is this it? Is this yep. Looking good. All right. Look how nice that looks. How'd you do that? <laughs> well, I just took our Zoom announcement and uh, and re and adapted it. I love it. <laughs> okay, so the first motion that Dr. Shabazz already spoke to, but we'll also give another opportunity for further discussion on this. Um, moved that the reparative justice fund. Do you want to read it, Dr. Shabazz? Actually. Or well, we only only to make a, a correction, uh, moved that the Reparative Justice Fund approved for an initial endowment amount of two million be accelerated to completion and begins to pay out by a timetable of the next two years, barring unforeseen circumstances that might prevent such completion. Moved. And Go so ahead. I second this, but I want to say that um, this is just to be clear, um, this is not a motion that this is a motion that asks us as a committee to vote on to include this as a recommendation in the report. So we've already Correct. started to build this recommendation, but now the uh, discussion that we've had today, um, this is enshrines that in the form of a motion Does that makes only sense? that yeah only that we are collectively writing the the report but as was brought up in a previous meeting you know there's a lag between what's written and what gets approved so I, it's just a matter of do we want to approve that this be put in to the draft we're working on or not if people's got another way they think we ought to go then we we can vote this down and, and think about that other way Okay, thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Uh, Yvonne. Oh, you're muted, Yvonne. <laughs> Are, you're all set, Yvonne? I can't see my icons when you share your screen. So I, oh. I couldn't, I can't find my icon to unmute because the screen has taken over. So I just stopped it on my end, stopped the sharing so I could see the unmute button. Um, <laughs> I raised my hand because I was wondering why the last part of that first um, section was included, barring unforeseen circumstances that might prevent such completion. It's objective. Yeah, you know, um, it, it, I mean, I mean, subjective. It's subjective to what the definition is of unforeseen circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know why it's in there because we actually don't care about those. It would be the town that says, oh, this can't be done because of whatever. Strike um, it, strike yeah. it. So I say, take that out. Cause we're not, we don't care that there's unforeseen circumstances. We want them to give us the two years. I'm strike gonna it. move this to a, um, a Google 
doc um, that we it's can disappear. So I can't see the. Yep. I'm not Anyone? saying that. I'm not saying there won't be unforeseen circumstances. I'm saying that that is a term that depends on who's defining what an unforeseen circumstance is, and we uh, might not be the ones figuring what that is, what those things are. So I, I, I think it's, I wouldn't invite I, it. I yeah. think it's a good edit, and I accept it. And I, I okay, so I, I'm going to delete it. this. Is that okay, yep. Dr. Schwaz? Okay. Yes. All right. So, and if you return or change the word beginning to begins, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Rhodes, please. All right. So, let me see if I'm reading this. It says move that reparation, that the repar reparative justice fund approved for approved for initial endowment amount of $2 million be accelerated to completion and begins to pay out by a timetable of the next two years. Is that what you're, is that correct there, what I'm reading? Correct. All right, so I look at that and I say, I don't know what that means. Uh, and what, because I say, move the reparative justice fund. All right, do we have a reparative justice fund? It's question one. Is that Should it a, be a different label? Well, I don't know. I don't. Because we have something start. now. I thought called the Re Reparation Stabilization Fund. But whatever that. Whatever we need to reference what is already there, not what we think is going to be there, or want to be there, or idealize being there. All right. So that's the, that's the first thing. Uh, and then approve for an initial endowment of amount of two million dollars. And there's a be accel accelerate, uh, yeah, over change, be accelerated. Uh, yeah, there is where we need more language that that's that's more specific. Uh, that definitely is more specific and targeted. Uh, so if I move that the uh, reparations stabilization fund approved for initial endowment of about of amount of two million dollars over ten years, be accelerated to be accelerated to be uh, be accelerated by we, we need we need to say something how we how do we want them to accelerate we're already talking about how we want them to accelerate it why okay. not get in there let me just say something dr Rhodes so actually um I think that the discussion that we're having is what's important and that that Mattia take the discussion that we're having and put it into the form of a recommendation based on all of the things that we've talked about today re regarding the fund, okay? So we could, I think that will then, do, I guess what I'm asking is, is do we feel a motion is necessary or are we on the same page in terms of the discussion that we had today? Um, because if we are on the same page and the recommendation gets put into the draft report, then it will, I would assume, be approved uh, naturally when we go to approve the report in its totality. Um, so I am comfortable with a consensus on this based on the discussion so we can flesh it out in the report a little bit more rather than trying to um wordsmith this right here do what do other people think yeah i'm 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 i'm, I, I'm in agreement because uh, trying to wordsmith this and go through my mind with how it should look is uh is not going to happen that now. Well, well the only thing that's being accelerated is the timetable to two yeah, years that's exactly. what we're voting on correct yes but what we're i think what we were saying yvonne is that we're asking them actually to do something more specific even which is to move the remaining balance um less what we already have in in the fund from the town's reserve account so we're not asking them to accelerate uh by taking it pulling it from here or there or somewhere else we're saying move it from this bucket to this bucket basically so Michelle, Michelle, relative yeah. to what I had in mind, though, I, yeah, that that's a new that's a new idea for me, and it sounds like it's one y'all are still kind of you and Irv want to still kind of uh, you know toy around with or discuss a little bit with the outgoing finance director and 
and the town manager. And I think that's fine if y'all want to continue. But I, but yes, I am driving for a consensus rather than it just be that we've talked about it, that we're agreed that the original formulation, the recommendation that, that called for the creation of an endowed fund over 10 years time yeah. is in our final report now, we're saying that is not a, the timetable we think this ought to work from, that instead it ought to work from by any means necessary, whether it's pulling from this existing uh, uh, bucket of reserves or, or, or where. I don't, I, I, that's all new information to me as to exactly where. And if you all wanna, wanna pinpoint that and, and see if the town manager and the fin uh, current finance director all believes that's, that's a, a solid recommendation to make to the larger council and that the larger and, and, and that they could understand the pros and cons of that uh, uh, to recommend to the larger council, then I say, great, then let's let's see if they are in agreement. Uh, but that we're but we have to first of all agree that this is the course that we are uh, we are recommending and want to make as part of our our final report. That's all. So whether by consensus or by a vote, I am saying let's let's move this out of just some, uh, uh, you know, move this to a specific consensus. That's what we're saying we want done. Okay, so let me try this, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, and and so, yes, I that that resonates. Um, so let me ask: Do any members of this committee um, object? to uh, the acceler the recommendation that we accelerate the fund by whichever means necessary. Um, do And if you object to making that recommendation, please raise your hand now and- I do not object. <laughs> Thank you, Hala. <laughs> Ms. Bridges, how do you object or agree with this? I agree. Okay. So I think we have a consensus then um, on that matter. Um, and does that work for you, Dr. Shabazz, for us to? Yep. Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, excellent. So then let's come back here because you. One, one other thing I would say, sure. kind of what I was trying to say in the language, it can even happen sooner than within two years. I just want to squeeze the 10 down to two, but if it can happen in two months, I'll be happy to, to to see the announcement that has been done in two months. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, yeah. If we were going to be voting on that, I would have knocked out for two years anyway. But we're not voting on it, so it doesn't matter. All right. So now I'm going to bring up. Um, okay, actually, let me do a time check here. Um, this is a fan. This is. Um, I'm going to share this because I want to share what Dr. Shabazz just even if we're not going to be able to get to it today, um, based on everybody's timeline here, I just want to put this out. Okay, so you guys start reading that and then um, let me ask I know Ms. Bridges has to leave around three is that right Ms. Bridges, it is three actually. I can be here for another at least 15 minutes. Okay, excellent. And Yvonne, I'm seeing 15 minutes. Okay. How about Dr. Rhodes, Dr. Shabazz, and uh, Hala, if you could just come in by voice and let me know if, if that works for you. I got about 15 minutes left. Okay. Hala, th that yeah. works for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to stop this for a second. I'm going to call the second period of public comment so that we make sure that that has occurred for our agenda, and then we'll know how much time we have left. We'll use the remainder of the time to discuss Dr. Shabazz's second motion here. So I've already read the statement. Um, if you would like to make public comment, this is our second period of public comment. Please use the raise hand function or pound nine if you're coming in by phone, and we will bring you in um, for up to three minutes. Okay, 
So I'm not seeing any. Uh, we've now completed our two periods of public comment. And I'm going to uh, share the screen again here. And so um, moved that the first two years of payout from the fund be committed to the funding of a youth empowerment center, especially with programming and initiatives that specifically address the need of young people of African descent. Dr. Rhodes. I, uh, yeah, I, I support this, but I would like for this. Uh, Why don't you second it? And then yeah, I'll. Uh, well, I, yeah. we're working from consensus. I don't think we have to have a second. Yeah, so and you can. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that here, here, here's a couple. Here's what I know that and that's going on in the town in relationship to this youth center. There has been a proposal that uh, it be uh, housed and located at the uh, the middle school for a number of different reasons. A, there's a swimming pool there. B, there's a gym there. C, there's a underutilized or not utilized room that could be done. Uh, and if you, if, you, if you use the middle school, then a large portion of that money that is there now doesn't have to go into renovation or acquisition of a building or building a building. So for me, if, if this thing were going to be going, if the youth center was going to be in the, in the middle school, then for, for me, I'd say, all right, that's great. Because what you're going to need now, you're going to need a little bit of build out money, but you're going to be more, need more of programmatic money. So what I would put in there is that, that, that over the next two years uh, of the money coming out of our fund, that it, again, as I said before, that it be matched by the town, by the recreation department uh, for programming or, or whatever. And again, prioritizing African-American youth. Okay. I just, I wanna acknowledge that I do see a hand raised um, from a phone number. Uh, we've already completed our two periods of public comment. Um, so I'm going to continue with this, this discussion. And um, if you would like, you can email me after the meeting uh, at uh, millerm at amherstma.gov. Uh, so, Dr. Rhodes, you bring up a point that I think is worth us considering more deeply uh, regarding this particular recommendation in that there may be, uh, there will be various uh, opinions about a youth empowerment center in terms of whether it should be at the middle school. This is the first time I'm hearing hearing that proposal. Um, whether it should be a standalone, whether it should be, you know, there's various locations that have been talked about. So I'm not here to judge any of that, but to say, do we want to make a recommendation uh, or we have to be clear if we're making a recommendation that we're either identifying some conditions or that we're not it's unconditional as long as it gets done and it goes through a consultative process. Um, ultimately, it will be the town manager and his his uh, you know the, and and the stakeholders that he um, consults with that will make the decision. But I just want to make sure that we're comfortable that if we're making an unconditional. Um, recommendation regarding so we're basically saying yes we support this and whether it's in the middle school or it's in its own building yeah, so I, I, yeah, I wasn't i wasn't saying and making any particular statement about where it should be or oh just, i know i'm yeah. just just saying hey here's what i know uh, right discussions have been going on about uh right. but anyway mainly uh clear cut that it's programmatic money that we're, what we're saying, you know, uh, in terms of this motion, 
is that what we're saying that in the, over the next two years that whatever comes out of it is going to go to the Youth and Pro, uh, Empowerment Center towards programming. And the reason I'm saying I don't, uh, I'm specifying programming, I don't want it to get really tied up in any kind of renovation, et cetera, and then you, and then that money is gone, and then there's no money for programming. Or you know, uh, now, now, yeah, I guess I would be open to that. It, you know, we don't have to define it, uh, but programming is certainly when you look out there over what's happening right now uh, to our kids in terms of uh, recreation programs, uh, it, it, it's expensive, just incredibly expensive for kids to participate. And we just, we need to eliminate that. And that's why I'm really all for, pro, for the money going into program. Okay, so you're saying youth program that benefits and prioritizes uh, black youth in the community. Is that uh, you, you, you cut out, so I didn't hear you. Youth program that prioritizes and benefits uh, Black youth in the community. Right. Yeah, okay. youth programs or whatever. And, and that differs from uh, construction costs, for example. Costs, renovation costs, et cetera. You want the town to bear it out. You don't want our money to be tied up in that. Okay. It'll get lost. How do other members feel about that? It's consistent with what, you know, was behind my, my, what I was trying to draft there. I will say one thing, I'm actually backing off now from trying to get into specific dollar amounts or how much of the fund and, you know, first two years or whatever. I think that should all evolve from the, at the time in which those kinds of projects or initiatives emerge and would require, would, would draw, would make specific requests to the successor body to say, here's what has come out of our needs assessment. Here's what we wanna do. Here's where black students are, black young people are, are particularly have helped to inform this. And this is, this is where we are in a need level. What I think we're trying to do at this level of the report is simply to signal that these kinds of initiatives that the council and the town manager have agreed upon and, have in, and are embarking upon trying to figure out, you know, and having these discussions, looking at different, uh, whether existing facilities or acquiring new facilities, all of that, that's, we're trying to say through this, that from our planning process, from our listening sessions, from our deliberations, we are simply saying that we recognize that those, uh, um, that within that work, there are, uh, um, aspects where it does overlap with the goals we are trying to accomplish, with the repair we are trying to recommend be, be, be affected, and we want to show support from, for that. And that, uh, and, and you know, and this goes to something I was ra I raised in previous many meetings ago in terms of trying to understand what DEI is doing and recommending that specifically has uh, Im could have impacts on uh, the black community. Uh, what is, you know, what Cress is doing? What uh, is envisioned with the, the uh, 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 these other projects of multicultural, of se the senior center even? You know, for me, this can even affect the kinds of funding that the senior center is appealing to. Um, you know, because I've, I've, I've long talked with people like Dac, uh, Dr. Jacqueline Smith Crooks and others who've tried to, to show within the senior center how certain needs weren't being addressed or could be better addressed to reach out and to uh, benefit Black elderly, Black senior citizens who were not benefiting as much from some of the existing programming and some of the existing work. So, you know, it, it's really across the board 
both initiatives that are right now being envisioned, as well as things that are already being done. They, we're trying to create the structure and to show, to, to create the, uh, to, and to build a fund that can then support those specific initiatives that uh, aim to uh, 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 benefit the, uh, the, the community that has long been harmed uh, in Amherst of, of, of people of, of African descent, Black African American people. That's all. Thank you. That's, yeah, that's very clarifying, um, Dr. Shabazz. And I just want to build on that and just, I, we have a couple more minutes here and I want to um, update the group to say that I had the opportunity today actually to speak with Jessica Allen. Um, Jessica is the manager, the, she's managing the project that was formerly known as the Ball Lane um, housing project in North Amherst, the district I represent. Um, it's now called Amherst Community Homes. Um, so if you hear that, you'll know that it was it was formerly the Ball Lane um, project. And that project consists of 32 to th three bedroom um, uh, houses. Um, so for sale, that will be for sale. Uh, units that will be for sale. And they have a very clear um, mission to support home ownership for folks that have previously um, not or been locked out of home ownership and in particularly in, Am in Amherst. Um, so again, we have a, a, a situation here. This is the construction start date for this is 2025. They believe completion will be done in 2026. And folks who apply through this lottery will be required to, to go through the banking process to, to put down payments down on these units. Um, and they will be folks who live in Amherst and who identify as Black and or BIPOC will be prioritized for these units. So I'm planting that seed for our next discussion as um, we talk about housing and how we might make a recommendation um, that uh, is either very specific to this project or that uses this project as an example. And I will forward to you the information that Jessica sent to me. All right. So uh, unfortunately, next Monday, I have a, a, an appointment for my daughter at two o'clock, so I'm not going to be able to meet at that time. So I will send a poll out to folks to see if there's another time that we can meet that day. Uh, were our folks generally able to meet next Monday? Did, does anyone know if they were? Okay, Yvonne, are you able to meet next Monday? No. Okay. Is there any day next week that you can meet? I'm going to look. Hold on. Okay. And Ms. Bridges and Hala and Dr. Rhodes. Um, I'm good. I'm good um, for Monday or Friday or um, like maybe after two o'clock. Like if it's next week. Yeah. Um, I'll double check, but probably if it's it's later on in the afternoon, I could just um, like after two o'clock. Otherwise, Monday and Friday would be fine with me. Perfect. Okay. Anytime so on Monday is fine. I think I can do Monday, the 7th, right? Yes, the 7th. Yeah. Yeah, I okay. can do that. I'm awesome. Good. How about you, Dr. Rhodes? I'm, I'm all right. I'm fine for that. Okay. And Hala? Will you be in transit that day or will you be back? I have to be. Um, no, I leave Tuesday. So. Okay. Maybe. So, are you trying to do it at a different time on Monday? Yes. Is it later than two? I, I was going to pull the group by text and just see what folks are good sure. with. So, I'll do that. I know folks have to start leaving. So, I, I'll send a text and we can just figure it out and then I'll let Jennifer know. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. <laughs> All right, so if there aren't any other um, member comments or questions or anything else, I'll just give a second for that and otherwise I'll adjourn the meeting.
All right. Really great meeting. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all next week. Bye. Adjourned at 316.